Hi, everybody. Thanks so much for joining us today. We're really excited um, that you've all decided to spend your Thursday with us. Um, Sarah and I have some really exciting topics to present for you today. Let me share my screen real quick. And we can hop into our slide deck. Quick little intro to myself. Um, so I'm Kater Lee. I'm a marketing and strategy director here at C Squared Social. And joining me today is the lovely Miss Sarah. She is in our Boise, Idaho office, and she is one of our killer account managers. Hi, everyone. Um, as Carrie just mentioned, I am on the account management team here at C Squared Social, um, located in the beautiful Boise, Idaho. And I'm really excited because it's a gorgeous day outside. The sun is shining, and we've got some really cool stuff we want to talk to you about. So stay tuned. Um, Carrie, why don't you kick things off? Perfect. Thank you. Um, so I yes. want to kick things off. First, by just saying that this is not your typical stuffy webinar. We are not going to go a minute past uh, 30 minutes, and we don't have you know hundreds of slides to show you. We're going to keep it short and sweet, um, and we're going to have some fun. And I promise you that you guys are going to learn some things today that um, you might not have known before. So with that being said, I'm going to jump into our first topic of the day, and that is the geofence. So you might be familiar with this terminology, geofencing or geofence. Um, it's a strategy we use here to really get very specific with targeting. So think of a geofence as being able to really put a virtual fence around a physical location. So I always give the example of a franchise show. Um, an example, IFE, we were just there a few weeks ago. And with a geofence strategy, we're able to, um, you know, draw that virtual fence around the convention center and then target that audience um, with our marketing. So I'm going to walk you through a quick visual here so you can see how exactly the, the geofence works. You'll see that the pin drops right here on that location. And then there's my target audience, and I'm able to get in front of them on these relevant platforms um, with my message. And now that message might be a little bit different depending on um, your strategy. So there's a few reasons why I really love the Geofence campaign. A um, couple things that you can do with the Geofence. Obviously, it's a great way to just expose your brand, especially in front of um, a qualified group of people. If you are a franchisor and you're going to um, a franchise conference, you know that your buyers or your potential candidates are spending time there. Why not get in front of them in such a competitive way with being there digitally? Um, and then there's also the, the idea of being able to try to book more discovery leads. So that might be a, a goal of yours is try to have meetings lined up while you're there at the conference. Um, that's certainly something you can do. You could have it called out in the ad. Maybe a call to action is for them to book a time on your calendar. So you've already got that lined up um, once you're there. Another objective might be just to simply drive traffic over to your booth. Um, so maybe you're handing out swag or you've got, say, a sales team that's there and, and ready to talk to candidates. Um, we can make that be the messaging in the ads as well. And then the third reason why I truly love the Geofence campaign um, is really because you're able to save a lot of money. If you're not able to attend a franchise show, um, it's a great way just to cut back on the cost and still be competitive, still be in front of your audience where you know they're spending their time. Um, and so in speaking about um, expenses, you know, we did, we broke down some of the costs for you. If you've ever been to a, a franchise show, you know how quickly these, these uh, expenditures add up. Um, so the, the space, the booth, there's so much that goes into it, the services, um, drinks and food. We know that if you're out at ISB, $20 for a cocktail, you won't get very far with $500. So a grand total of $16,500 just to attend a franchise show. So there's so much that goes into it. Um, with that amount of money, if you were to use that digitally, you could get in front of um, audiences throughout multiple franchise shows. So I mean, you can really use the geofence in a few different ways, whether you're maximizing your investment. And let's say you do plan on going in and attending and having a booth. 
um, drive traffic, get more meetings, make the most out of that investment. And if you're not able to attend, still be there and still expose your brand um, by being present on uh, social media. Quick review of the platforms that we're able to reach people on. Um, that's through Facebook, Instagram, and what's called the audience network. So the audience network is such a key component to these camp campaigns. Um, it's how we're able to get in front of candidates really wherever they're spending their time. So they don't necessarily have to be on Facebook looking at pictures of their you know, grandma or whatnot. They can be spending time on, say, the news. Um, maybe they're booking their Uber or looking for a hotel reservation. Um, you know, maybe they're playing a game like Words with Friends or something on their phone. That's how we're able to get in front of these people, really, wherever they're spending their time. And then I'm going to close with just a few pro tips for you on the geofence. Um, so these are things that I always like to put in place just to really maximize your efforts with a geofence campaign, and that is to always advertise um, prior to the event. You'll get the most bang for your buck this way, so make sure that you're, you know, you're putting it out there that you're going to either attend the event or that you're, you're looking for potential candidates that are going to the event. Um, you want to, you know, give yourself um, that little bit of wiggle room before the event and ramp up. And then also be sure to remarket after the event. So we know that sometimes after these shows, um, you know, as people go home, they're digesting a lot of information. And as they're still kind of in that, um, that phase where they're making decisions, uh, you're able to get in front of them again and again. You're able to be the, you know, um, present in front of them on their phone on these different platforms. So remarketing to that audience after they've attended the event is, is really crucial in the success of these campaigns. So that's my little tidbit for the day. I'm going to let Sarah take it over and chat with you a little bit more about fun topic, motion graphics. Yeah. Thanks, Carly. That was some really insightful information. Um, I know for a fact that I learned a lot from that. So thank you. It's um, good. Now to move, yeah, you're welcome. Um, now to move us along with just motion graphic and video ads. This is definitely one of my favorite topics to talk about. Um, and so I've got some really, um, some great statistics for you today that I'm sure um, is probably gonna shock some of you. I know that it definitely shocked me. So to start us off, did you know that the average human attention span is now down to less than a goldfish? That's right, folks. We are down to only about eight seconds now. And so now you're thinking, what does that mean for my marketing efforts? It means that you've got eight seconds to capture your audience's attention. Time is really of the essence here. It means that um, your audience is on social media, but they are moving very fast. And so you have to hook them within those first few moments. And research is showing us that the best way to do this is through video and motion graphics. And that's because they have been proven time and time and again to not only increase sales, but they increase traffic, they increase engagement and brand awareness as well. They really, people are saying that these are the types of ads that they want to see on their social media feeds. These are the ads, these are the number one favorite types of ads. And because of this, they are viewing at these ads five times longer than they would any other types of ads. So essentially, these video and motion graphics give your company and your brand the opportunity to really bring out extra details, you know, color, movement, and essentially bring your ads to life. They are a great resource and a great tool for you to really engage, um, you know, entertain and educate your audience like, like, never, like never before. Like, you know, this is, this is a new time for us. Um, honestly, 46% of people are reporting that they would rather watch video and motion graphic ads on social media than any other types of ads on television. And that statistic alone should really go to show you how important it is for you to be advertising on social media. Um, and I say this to you because the bottom line here is, is that your ads or your marketing campaign needs video and motion graphics. So much so that 81% of companies, so 81% of businesses, so your competition, they are reporting that they use some form of video and motion graphics for their campaign. 
And the biggest the biggest statistics that I have for you today is the most crucial point. And if you take anything away from what I say you what I say to you today is that as we continue to move to become more and more digital, and as social media continues to become this driving force behind all things advertising in the next year, 82% of all consumer internet will be video and motion graphics. Just let's take a time to let that sink in, 82%. That is a really big number, which means that these video and motion graphic ads are no longer this innovative strategy that you should probably think about, in a, you know, uh, placing into your marketing campaign. That it's no longer that. It has become in a necessity. It has become essential for you to stay competitive in today's marketing environment. Um, and then the next few slides, I actually have some examples for you of just what these motion graphics would look like. Um, notice how that slight movement. Um, although really small, you know, although really simple, it really pulls you in as you are going down your timeline and whatever platform it may be, as you're going down that timeline, um, you know, scrolling, um, and just on the topic of scrolling, a really interesting just the other day while I was doing some research is that on a regular basis, so on a day, on the daily, the average person is to scroll the height of the Statue of Liberty. That's 300 feet on a regular basis. And so that's why it's so important for you to be creating these captivating, um, you know, these captivating video and motion graphics to really pull them in. And so it's really important to remember that. Um, and so you might not have noticed from, you know, these examples that I have for you here, but our expert graphic designers, they use After Effects, and then they work with, you know, whatever assets that you may have company and with your account manager here at C-Square Social, they really work together to create, um, you know, to a really encapsulate um, your exact brand and what you're actually trying to portray to your, um, to your audience. And so I know that was a lot of information. I definitely felt it. As Kaylee was speaking, as I was speaking, I know it's a lot of information, but um, she went over just cash, you know, just kind of how Geofencing um, really helps competitive, but it really helps you maximize um, your exposure. Um, and it also, you know, the most important thing is that it really helps you save a great deal of money. And then on the motion graphic side of things, you know, these video ads, um, we learned that they are, they have become an essential or a necessity um, in today's marketing efforts as we continue to become, you know, more, as we continue to move towards um, this era of video ads. And so if you aren't already using motion graphic and video ads as part of your marketing campaign, um, please feel free to, um, to contact your, your account manager here or text or call Kaylee and myself um, on that number on your screen right now. Um, and, you know, and we can really get your ads ready and launched in five to seven days. So just like that. So it, it can really be quick. Um, and if you have any other questions as well, please feel free to, to, you know, to text and call that number. Um, and really just on the topic of questions, Kaylee and I have, um, we've made just a couple questions, just common questions that we get all the time from our clients, you know, when we're discussing the topic of geofencing and motion graphics. And so I'll start things off with you, Kaylee. And in the topic of geofencing, can you tell me if I was, you know, being a potential client, can you tell me how many leads I'm expected to get? Absolutely. Yeah, that's a, a very common question. It comes up a lot. You know, what are the results of my geofence going to um, going to be? And it and it really does vary, of course, depending on um, on the event or on the show. But I would say it's somewhat comparable to um, a national campaign. Um, I will say that the cost per lead is typically um, below uh, fifty dollars a lead on a national scale with a Geofence campaign, we could see that cost really be just a little bit higher because remember, the goal of the Geofence campaign is to really expose the brand and get in front of a very qualified audience. So although you might be not be getting the exact same volume, the, the leads that do come through are going to be a, a more ideal candidate. 
that that's a really good answer, Kaylee. I really love the fact that you brought up the whole quality factor. I feel like that's that's the goal at the end of the day. We're trying to get our ads in front of the people who are more likely to fill out a lead form or convert. So that was a really good answer. Thank you. Um, awesome. Do you have any questions? Yeah, of course. Do you have any questions for me? I do. I do. Um, okay, let's so hear. one thing that does come up a lot is if I were to add motion graphics to my campaign strategy, um, what is really going to be the difference in results um, when I think about motion versus static? What can I expect to see changing in my campaign? Okay, I love that question. That's a really, really good question. I mean, we, we went through this slide deck, and I, I was able to really show you the numbers. Um, and it's really important to remember that the numbers don't lie. They honestly speak for themselves. Um, as I said, that the results or people are reporting that they gaze at these ads five times longer than they would regular ads. And so if you think about it, that's five times the amount of people reach, five times the impression, five times the engagement, the comments, the likes, the shares, and really essentially five times um, the amount of leads, five times the amount of possibilities um, that you're going to be meeting your marketing goals. Um, and so, you know, and if you want a number for it, from just benchmark information, um, you know, from performances that we've seen in the past, we've seen that on average these video and motion graphic ads tend to perform 185% better than static ads. And I'm not here to bash on static ads. I'm really not. I'm a big fan. I really am. But um, <laughs> and I've, I've said this. I said this before, and I'll say it again. As we continue to move towards this era of video and motion graphic ads. And as you know, we continue to be more digital and social media continues to be this driving force behind all things advertising, I'm saying that video um, and motion graphic ads are a necessity for your marketing campaign. They're, they're, they're just, they're needed. Um, and so that's my answer for that question. I like that answer. And so, I know for myself, when I think about my own just user behavior that um, I am so much more likely to be engaging with motion you know, on in my own feed. So great answer there. Yeah. No, exactly, exactly. I definitely totally agree with you. Um, another question that I that we get all the time in regards to geofencing is a lot of people seem to get confused between what you mean, what we mean by geofencing and geographic targeting. And I, we were really hoping that you could clear that up for us today. Yes, you got it. Absolutely. I see um, that makes perfect sense that you, that you could confuse the two. They're really mm -hmm. essentially a little bit interchangeable. Um, obviously, the word is just a little bit different, but with a geofence campaign, the goal is to go after a very specific um, address where, you know, like the example of IFE where we're able to target a convention center, that's the use of a geofence. Um, different right. from geo-targeting when we use in general campaigns when we're trying to go after a city, a state, or a country. So a little bit broader on the geo-targeting, um, the geo-fence is a little, uh, little more refined approach. Mm -hmm. hope that answered that mm -hmm. question. It really does. I feel like, uh, for, especially for our audience, I feel like it probably cleared up a lot of our questions that they had. So thank you. Um, did you have yeah. any other questions for me? I have one last one on my list for you, Sarah. And okay, um, let's hear it. Yes, drum roll. So if I were to invest in, <laughs> if I were to invest in motion graphics, um, okay. is there a specific platform you'd recommend I I put those motion graphics on? I, I love that question, and I feel like I'm starting to sound a little bit like a broken record, but, you know, it's important to remember that this, the era of video and motion graphics, that's where we're headed. And so they're going to perform on whatever platform, you know, that you, that you want, whether that be Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, or just a number, the number of websites that are affiliated with, you know, with Facebook. They're going to perform because that's just where, that's just where marketing or advertising as a whole is headed. Um, but we have seen a big push in um, Instagram stories. And you might have noticed that when we um, were showing our slide deck earlier with the Instagram stories, 
um, these video and motion graphic ads tend to take up the entire screen. Um, and so yeah. that's why we've seen that they perform, you know, just a little bit better. That engagement is just a little bit higher. But in general, they work for whatever platform. So that's my answer awesome. for that. Yeah. I, I love the examples that we have, too, for that motion graphic where they take the whole screen. What a great way to brand. Yeah, for sure. Oh, perfect. And you can see, and that really shows you why the engagement is just better because it's just like, oh, it really just makes you stop whatever it is that you're doing to really just pay attention to what it is. So it's great. Yeah, exactly. Well, I think that um, we will wrap up there. If there are any additional questions from our audience, please feel free to reach out to us. Um, shoot us a quick text message. I will leave our number. We've got it here. Our phones are handy. So if you want to send us a message um, and chat with us a little bit more about the details of adding maybe motion graphics to your current campaign um, or, you know, talking to us about a strategy for some of the upcoming shows and making sure that you're um, geofencing those shows and getting in on that opportunity. So, um, and we hope to be doing these webinars more often together. So we'll, we hope to see you on the next one. Thanks again for your time, everybody, and enjoy the rest of your Thursday. Thank you. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye.